y'all. This is Ginger DeVries, guest number 56 of the podcast, encouraging you today to use your position to broadcast God's love. God's word says, whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. We pray this episode is an encouragement to you to go out and use your position to broadcast his love. From Scotto Albritton Studios, here's your host, Ricky. Hello, broadcast his love audience. Thank you all for tuning in this week. This is not Ricky, this is Riley. And I am very honored to have a great friend, Lee Zondi from Upper Room Church with Christian Surfers. Man, I'm so happy you're here in the studio. How you doing, dude? I'm doing great, man. It's <laughs> fine. Everybody messes up my name. Dude, I even <laughs> spelled it out phonetically and I just, I, I'm like, I can't do it. I'm, I, the one thing I didn't want to do, but oh well. <laughs> it's all good, yeah. Um, my name is Lizon Don Kayescu. It's a mouthful and the first day of school was always fun. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Awesome, man. Well, thanks for coming in today. Thank you for the time. Um, Man, you're awesome. You have an awesome story, and I can't wait to listen and learn about a little bit what you're doing, what God's doing in your life, and what he's doing with your ministry. So honestly, man, let's just kick it off. Lizon, tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, first off, I just want to say thanks to you. You know, this is a epic opportunity here, and like, this is so rad that you know, this podcast reaches so many people and can encourage them in in their faith journey. But, you know, for me, um, let's see, I started out in like an Episcopal church growing up and, you know, my mom sang in the choir. I was like one of the dudes who carried the little cross and the torches, an acolyte. Acolyte. But um, looking back, I was like, we had to do community service for high school and really that was my community service project. So, um, I, I kind of got really frustrated with what I was seeing in the church. Looking back, I'm like, man, it was really transactional. It was like, I didn't see a lot of, um, what I, what I now know is like a personal relationship Mm. with Christ. Um, it seemed more of like, people exchanging business cards at the coffee hour afterwards. Yeah. And so I'm I mean I I don't say that to knock any any, you know, churches or anything like that, but mm-hmm. for me it kind of like reeked of hypocrisy and so I got pretty turned off um and really fully dove the opposite direction. Yeah. And um so what age was this when when you were kind of like uh I'm not liking how this is going? So that was basically high school. Mm-hmm. Um, I still went because that was my community service project. Right. So, you know, once a month or twice a month when I was on the schedule, I would be there. And, um, you know, at that point in time, you know, growing up in the surf culture, um, for those of you that maybe aren't familiar with it, um, especially in the late 90s and early 2000s, it was like a very like sex drugs and rock and roll Mm -hmm. mentality you know punk rock music and really just like kind of seeking after whatever it was that made you feel good in that moment Mm -hmm. um you know whether it's waves or drugs and alcohol you know they were a real you know part of of the culture um and oftentimes even really like celebrated and uh to my experience that was what like everybody did. Right. And so, you know, I, I started surfing when I was about 10 years old. Um, my cousin came to visit from Huntington Beach, California oh, wow. and brought two surfboards, one for me and one for my older brother. And um, I have this like vivid memory of me and him going out in the bay, you know, and mm-hmm. just like paddling and me like paddle racing him and. I don't know. It was like just the coolest thing ever. I wasn't even riding a wave. I was just paddling. And I was oh, you like, beat your brother. <laughs> this is so rad. And um, yeah, I was kind of like hooked after that. I had my own board. So I was uh, really blessed to live on the beach so I could ride my bike or walk mm-hmm. to go surf um, after school. And so I really just like dove in. I was like, this is, this is it, man. This is, this is epic. And so I, 
like like anything that anybody does i was like looking for role models right and so i looked in the surf community and the guys in the you know generation above me uh, i looked up to them i wanted to like surf like them i wanted to be like them it mm. looked like they had this like super awesome lifestyle they just got to hang at the beach and go surf and um you know i so i started doing what they did and and you know the surfing side of it's great Mm -hmm. hanging at the beach is great but what i realize now like looking back was it was the the down times that i was kind of emulating from them Mm -hmm. that it really like led me down a dark path and um so it in, in high school you know I know a lot of people get into get into stuff and mm-hmm. you know there's parties and drinking and drugs and all that stuff that um you know can can kind of happen in, in oh, those yeah. formative high school and college years and stuff but it really you know kind of took a hold of my life without really noticing that it was and uh it became just a second nature thing where I would like you know cruise cruise up to the beach and um go check the waves and if the waves Mm. didn't look great uh just pop over to the bar and drink until i thought the waves looked great (laughs) but that never really happened i would just continue (laughs) drinking and so um yeah i i i definitely um embraced that side of things Mm -hmm. um to obviously my detriment but um it's one of those things i like i look back on and like i'm not like proud of but it was part of my walk and mm-hmm. it, it led me to you know a place that i am now and uh like i couldn't imagine being anywhere else since like i'm just super blessed to be kind of in the position i am and being able to do what the lord's called me to do dude well i mean it's awesome that you identify that oh man i i wish i or you know i i, I didn't like those experiences i i went through but man, God uses those. And like, you can probably relate with, you know, people that you work with all the time that, Hey man, I've been where you're at. I know where you're, I know what you're feeling. So, I mean, he uses those hard times for his glory. Like it's not fun having to clean it up, but he cleans us up and you know, he uses it for good. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, I spoke a little bit earlier about, you know, kind of the hypocrisy that I saw and, um, it's something that I've always really, um, attempted to maintain is like an authenticity Mm -hmm. and um you know you can't reach somebody who's going through something that effectively if you don't know what they're going through right so like if you never suffered from addiction it's hard to talk to someone who's who's an addict because Mm -hmm. you you can't comprehend what they're going through um if you've never suffered a, a a traumatic loss it's hard to to reach someone or talk to them on their level. Right. Um, if they have experienced that just because we can't comprehend it until it happens. And so, you know, I, I have been super blessed. Yeah. Man, it sounds weird to say that, but super blessed to, um, have gone through those like really rough patches and mm-hmm. down times. And, um, because I, I can, I can speak from experience to people and I know what they're going through. And, um, you know, I tried many, many times in many different ways to pull myself out, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, Mm -hmm. you know, mind over matter, all this stuff. And, um, you know, when, when you're suffering in those sorts of ways, it's just, you you can't do it yourself. There's no way. Yeah. I mean, you can, it sounds, it sounds like you can pull yourself up by your bootstraps, but in reality you can't cause you're just pulling <laughs> your feet up to your arms. You're not actually going anywhere. you like, you, you've got to have Christ pull you through it. Otherwise you're just going to be struggling and you've got to give it up. And that's awesome that you've done that, man. And you've, uh, so a little bit about what you do. Lizon is a missionary, works with Christian surfers. It's an awesome organization. So, I mean, God has tailor made, your past, you know, experiences with surfing and growing up and everything. And now, man, I would love to hear a little bit and just share with our audience what you're doing with Christian surfers, man, because I mean, I just think it goes been, it it's perfect. You've been where a lot of the surfers have been. Yeah, bro. It's like, it's crazy <laughs> um, to think that 
you know. So <laughs> CS Christian Surfers is, you know, a, a Christian nonprofit um, where Christian Surfers United States, we exist in around 30 local communities. Wow. Uh, we call them chapters here in the United States. Um, we're also just one part of Christian Surfers International, which is in 28, 27 or 28 countries around the world. Wow. And basically our aim is to reach lost surfers for Jesus. Mm. Um, we do that through community outreach, partnerships, uh, surf camps. We do surf contests. We support local churches, foreign missions, um, really anything involving the surf community we want to be a part of. And we want to basically live out the life changes uh, that Christ has done in us and to kind of show people that like there's a different way. Um, you know, my role is as the Gulf Coast reg Regional Coordinator. And so my region covers um, basically Brownsville, Texas, the Texas-Mexico border all the way down to i'd say naples Florida. wow and so it's a really big area it's a big swath yeah um and you know ideally in the future it would be broken up into uh, a couple regions but right now um right here in pensacola is the only active chapter along the whole gulf coast and you know i've i've done some research and contacted people that i know and some of the like OGs from the Christian <laughs> and surfing community here. And, you know, there's like 20, 20 plus surf communities along the Gulf coast mm -hmm. that are thriving. Um, and, and yeah, there's, there's churches there and there's ministries there, but it's, it's kind of this weird thing where like surf people are like, kind of like a like a like a tribe honestly oh yeah it's um <clears throat> they speak their own language if you've ever spent any time <laughs> around surfers we we use a lot of slang and stuff that sometimes people don't understand they're kind of uh wary of outsiders if oh, you're yeah. not in the in the club like you know if you're not a surfer they can tell and they'll be a little bit leery of you and so it's super cool that like god has positioned us mm -hmm. because we're already part of the tribe we speak the language we know the ins and outs and, and we can really, you know, uh, talk to people and be accepted in situations that others just wouldn't, mm -hmm. you know, traditional evangelism or church outreaches on the beach. They don't really have the same effectiveness, I guess would be the right word, mm -hmm. um, at, at reaching those who are really like in the, in the community, um, because again, it's kind of like, what is, what is, what do these guys know? They're not, they're not living it. They right. don't know it. Um, and so it's just been, it's been awesome to kind of allow, you know, I had no idea that this was even a thing. <laughs> yeah. You right. Know? Honestly, like, isn't that cool how God works? Man? <laughs> yeah. You know, to say that I'm a, you know, basically a surf missionary is like probably one of the coolest titles I could have ever imagined. Definitely. Um, but yeah, so I, I work, you know, as a local missionary, um, but one of our, you know, one of our big things that we like, like we, we call them surf and serves. Mm -hmm. And so they're, um, foreign mission trips, basically, cool. um, they're surf trips. So mm -hmm. surf trips traditionally have gone to, you know, surf rich locations throughout the world, Central America, um, Africa, you know, wow. South America, all over the place. But what we found is that the traditional surf trip, it really just consumes, you know, we go to places and we, we consume their waves, we consume their resources, we consume, um, you know, food, anything mm -hmm. that, that they're there. And so <clears throat> we were like, yo, we're here to serve. Mm -hmm. So let's take this idea of the surf trip and like flip it's on flip it on its head yeah and so we kept the good part of it which is the surfing yeah yeah. and then instead of the rest of the day i don't know taking naps or going to the bar or whatever it is that people <laughs> do um we spend that time intentionally serving in local communities there you know we wow. find um kind of that person to peace and um we really pour into them and we provide 
what we can, which is, you know, manpower, uh, financial resources, mm-hmm. encouragement. Um, a lot of these places are fairly isolated mm. and, um, you know, just having a team come down and pray with them and encourage them in, in what they're doing, that it, it is making a difference and it does matter. And sometimes you're just planting seeds mm-hmm. and you may not be there to reap the harvest, but somebody else is going to come, come along and they will start reaping that harvest definitely and so it's just been like it's been so powerful and so awesome to be able to go to these places and and create you know continued relationships over the years um we we don't want to pop into communities and come like plant our flag and be like hey this is how you do it (laughs) so we like we go and we we work with the same people and the same organizations um on all our trips, you know, continuously. Um, I just actually got back from a trip to the Dominican Republic. Yeah. Tell us about that, man. Yeah. So this is, um, this was actually our longest continuous trip to the Dominican Republic. Um, I think it's been going on nine years. They've been going yearly and we work with a youth boys home there called Ninos de la Luz. And basically it's serving street kids in the Dominican Republic and they get, placed in this home and there's a small school there that you know they give them an education and very um you know intentional about uh their exposure and um teaching them about jesus what what's the age here at the school i mean is it elementary up to high school or i mean yeah. okay yeah so it, depending on the year you know after 18 they age out and they go you know go back into the you know real world so mm-hmm. to speak um but the the way that the foster systems run in dominican um they kind of get they, they can't just go find kids on the street and bring them into the community right. so it like goes into the foster system and then they get placed in different homes and different things like that and so um, this year there were seven, eight kids, mm-hmm. um, ranging from 11 to 17. Wow. And um, one of the cool things about this ministry is they have this like amazing, amazing coffee shop <laughs> called Vagamundo, and it supports the ministry um, financially. And as the kids age out, they are given the opportunity to apply to work there wow and learn life skills that they can then translate into you know working in another part of the hospitality industry uh the community there is like a big surf travel destination okay. so um you know giving them an actual way out you know it's like super rad and yeah and um yeah if you're if you're ever in cabarete go to go to vagamundo it's amazing Oh man, coffee. <laughs> awesome. Man. Do do a lot of the kids at the at the home do they surf? No, so it's actually um kind of up in the mountains oh, about okay. like 20 minutes away. Gotcha. And um but the uh the guys who who run it um have been partnering with Christian surfers for years and we just absolutely love uh you know the intentional time that we're able to spend with the boys and Definitely. Um they're all super rad and it's just like, it's such a blessing to, well, the to blessing goes a little, <laughs> well, it goes both ways, man. Like you're blessing those kids, but also I'm, I, I'm sure everybody that every experience I've been on with a mission trip, I'm almost getting more out than what I'm putting in because I'm just, it's just seeing what God's doing and like I'm making me more uh, grateful and just, uh, just seeing the joy of these people around you in much worse situations almost every time than what we're, when we come back home. It just, I don't know, I, I, every time I've done a mission trip, I've come back more blessed because of like, I'm just more grateful. And <laughs> Yeah, man, that gratitude, it'll get you every time. But, yeah. You know, that's that's one thing, um, you know, I really, like, like short-term mission trips are awesome. Mm-hmm. They really are, but they're really more for the people going on the trips mm-hmm. than the people that we're serving. And so that's one of the reasons why we really intentionally create these partnerships to serve with the same people over the years so we can see an impact mm-hmm. year over year over year. But man, yeah, if you've never been on a foreign missions trip, I highly encourage it. It will Definitely. Like, totally change your life. Um, just seeing the situations that other people, um, around the world live in, 
it it really makes you grateful for a lot of the little things that we have um, back home. But the biggest thing for me is is seeing how they live and just seeing how happy they yeah. are with what we in the Western world would consider like lack. Mm-hmm. And man, it it totally changes your life. You know, we're worried about like, oh man, the Netflix subscription went up this month <laughs> and this and that, and and these guys are like just stoked to have a new soccer ball to kick around, or yeah. you know, just just even hang with somebody who who is there for no other reason than to serve like help them help help put a roof on part of their school building mm-hmm. help you know pour some concrete or just be with them just be <laughs> with them dude well and i man it's so healthy to always be around other cultures and i mean especially the language barrier like i mean being around cuz i'm sure a lot of the kids probably don't speak english i would think and probably some of the missionaries probably speak Spanish, but for the most part, if it is, it's barely passable. I mean, they're, they're maybe ordering tacos at a taco stand here in the States and feel pretty good about it. But just being around other cultures and realizing like, man, God hears all of our prayers, like not just the English ones, not, you know what I mean? Like that's, that was something that always really impacted me coming back. It's like, man, God really is everywhere and can hear everything. And he's got the heart for all his people, not just the ones here in Pensacola beach or, you know, Wisconsin or Russia, like everywhere. So it's, that, I, it's always been a really impactful thing. Like we, Ricky and I haven't been on a mission trip since we've had kids. And it's like, man, it's been on our heart. Like we need to go back and serve, you know, outside the country at some point, just to regain that gratitude of like, and that reminder of like how big God is, but also just be like, man, we, we've got it very good. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And like, you know, you, one thing I'll say about the language barrier is like, yeah, our Spanish probably isn't good. (laughs) Even the people who are like, quote unquote, fluent in Spanish, as soon as you open your mouth in another location, they're like, no, Spanish is not your first language. Like we can tell, but like, there's no language barrier to quality time with someone. And you don't have to speak the language to like play a silly game with the kids. You know, one of the, one of the games that like we've we've played with the kids in the past and we played again this year is like we call it the Oreo game and it's sounds ridiculous but like you put an Oreo on your forehead and you got to get it into your mouth without using your hands oh, that and like it's a just game. like a crazy little game and everybody's laughing and falling on the floor by the end of it and That's yeah awesome. it's just uh you know everybody can kick a soccer ball around everybody can you know throw a basketball everybody can play tag so like you, you build connections beyond language. Oh, love's universal, man. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but that Oreo game sounds pretty good. Might need to do that at Upper Room. Yeah, <laughs> Icebreaker. Yeah, come come on out to the next CS Pensacola meeting. We'll we'll do oh, <laughs> we'll nice. do the Oreo game. <laughs> Definitely. So, uh, yeah, man. So, how many mission trips do y'all roughly do out of the Pensacola chapter with CS a year? So our mission trips are. Um, like they're nationally run. Oh, cool. And so okay. we take like local mission trips through the church. Mm-hmm. And that was, you know, my first experience with foreign missions. Um, but all of the CS mission trips kind of are run nationally unless they're, you know, local partnership trips that, you know, some people run with, with a church here and there. And, you know, we're planning a couple of them locally, but it's one of those things that like, I don't care if you come on a CS trip, if, as long as you're going on a trip, Mm -hmm. like I'll, I'll help any church plan a trip to one of these locations. And we don't, you know, it's a big thing for me is like, we don't need our name on the top of the banner. Like we're, we're, we're on team Jesus. So like, as long as his name is getting glorified, we don't need to, you know, I I don't care about Christian surfers name. Definitely, man. Yeah. The national director probably won't be stoked I said that, but <laughs> that's okay. Uh, you know his boss, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is, he, yeah, he's, he's got it. But no. Yeah, but nationally, so when I first joined staff three or four years ago, maybe, I don't even know. It seems like it's been 10 years and it hasn't been probably three. <laughs> um, there were about four trips a year gotcha. that we would run. And now, you know, over the last two years, our staff has grown to where we have, I think, 12 full-time staff members or 12 staff members. I think a couple of them might be 
part-time but um and one of the responsibilities of each staff member is to lead a foreign missions trip so we're up to like 10 to 12 trips wow that's Um, awesome yeah so we had a a surf and surf to israel that was planned for the beginning of the year and um had to you know be postponed basically Mm -hmm. indefinitely until you know situation changes over there but you know we we've got a team going to the olympics this year doing olympic outreach because surfing is an olympic sport now which is awesome and so yeah we'll have a team on the ground in france um doing outreach at like the main uh surf breaks there um for those of you that don't know surfing actually won't be in france it will be in tahiti uh, which is oh. French Polynesia, so oh. it's still a part of France. That loophole. But, yeah. <laughs> but um, so the contest itself will be over there, and it's a small island, so it's kind of hard to send a team there when, like, every nation is going to be, you know, having full Olympic teams there. Um, yeah, every hotel will be booked. <laughs> yeah, dude, for sure. Um, we've got teams going, you know, we just went to the Dominican Republic. We've got teams going to El Salvador, Costa Rica, Panama, Nicaragua, Chile, um, Indonesia. Yeah, man. And, and, and those are kind of just the foreign ones, and I'm probably leaving some off. Um, we do, uh, like, local missions, I guess you would call them, um, kind of like, like campouts and and things like that where uh we do one down in baja mexico for the west coast uh hawaii just had the warm water camp out we do the east coast camp out in the outer banks Hmm. and so all these things um you know they all have the goal of growing the people on the team or the people in attendance and then serving in the community and you know, that's, that's really something that's important to us is, is giving back because like, man, we're so blessed to just be able to surf. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I, I want, I want people to see surfers in a different light, honestly. Um, you know, when, <laughs> when that cousin of mine brought a surfboard to me when I was 10 years old, I'm not going to lie. My dad told me absolutely not right because, uh, he, what he knew about the surf community was like they're like burnout hippies who just don't do anything beach bums live for today (laughs) and like he wasn't wrong Mm -hmm. you know um but it's been cool seeing you know how how that's changed even in my lifetime you know you can look just here locally and you paddle out and you'll see like high powered lawyers and dentists and orthodontists Mm -hmm. and businessmen and pastors and all sorts of people out in the water where you know it's it's not the like old beach boy mentality kind of thing where they just just hang at the beach all day waiting for waves Mm -hmm. so awesome man well if y'all want to learn more about christian surfers you know look up uh, or Lizon, do you want to share the, the info where they can find out about christian surfers yeah so you can go to christiansurfers.com and uh, you can check out anything and everything that we're about. We've got a list of our upcoming mission trips. Um, one thing I will say is that all of the staff members are local missionaries. So we are all 100% supported by individuals and churches, um, you know, around the country and around the world. And so, you know, if God's put it on your heart, mm-hmm. um, we would love to have you on our on our support team. And even if... Uh, you know, even if that just means that you're praying for us, we would be super blessed. Um, we put out a uh, weekly devotional called The Living Water. And if uh, if you go there on the website, up at the top, there's a little form, just email and name, and you'll be automatically signed up. You'll get it every week on Monday morning. Wow. And hopefully it'll be um, encouraging to you and help you in your faith walk. Yeah. Definitely. Well, and please, man, I just appreciate what you're doing because God's called you to minister to surfers. And I mean, that's what this podcast is about, man. It's just, what are you doing for Christ? Cause we're all just, we before we turn on the mic, we're all just normal people. And like God's done amazing things through us. And he's given us, he's given you the heart to minister to surfers and those who like to surf to, you know, not just teach them how to surf better, or take them to cool places, but to tell them about who Jesus is and how much, he has changed your life and how much he can change their life. So that's, 
Really awesome, man. All right, Lizon. So tell us how you made that connection from Christ from going from like being in the church to where it was like, it kind of made sense to you about who this Jesus guy was and what he did for you. Or if it, if it even happened that way, I don't know. Yeah. So, I mean, through my, you know, into high school, going off to college and, you know, even probably well into my thirties, I was just like self gratifying, mm -hmm. you know? And man, it's just, it's a really hollow existence, you know, um, people, people are searching for community and you can find it. Yeah. You can find it in not great places. I, I found it at a bar stool, you know, you, you can go sit at a bar stool and you'll be best friends with the guy sitting next to you, Definitely. but you guys don't have anything in common except the drink, right. you know? And, um, yeah, I, I, there was not really like a crazy watershed moment to be honest with you. Um, well there was, but like leading up to it, there mm -hmm. wasn't. So I, um, you know, was living in the like downtown bar scene, uh, surfing when there were waves and just kind of doing my thing. And, um, I met my, my now wife, um, at a bar mm -hmm. surprise surprise <laughs> um but but she's awesome by the she's way she's amazing she I, I really couldn't um imagine doing life with anybody else or like you know I, I i couldn't imagine being able to do the things that i do uh without her support and mm -hmm. like unwavering like when i say like send it a lot of times she's the one who's like saying like yeah do it for sure wow and i'm like but I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be gone for a week, and you're gonna be home with the kids alone. She's like, "That's fine. We'll make it work." Wow, you know. And so, um, yeah, super super blessed. Um, but neither one of us were really living for the Lord when we met. Right. And um, things progressed very quickly. Um, we we started dating and moved in together and um yeah we got pregnant within like six or eight months mm -hmm. of of dating and so you know this is not a, a follow my example story um but you know uh she was a school teacher um i was working in commercial real estate at the time oh, wow. um for some developers and god was was at work in the background for sure um it, it was uh, coming up on the end of the school year and I had already planned on us taking this trip in the summertime and I was going to propose and like all these things. And, and, and then, you know, she got, she got sick mm. and it was like the end of the school year and it's like, oh, the flu's going around That's and all right. these sick kids got her sick and like, and she didn't really like get better. Like, she, you know, she yeah. kept being sick and we were like, all right. And so we found out we were pregnant and, um, so things got, you know, sped up mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and, um, you know, we, we found out that, that we were having twins mm -hmm. and super epic surprise. Um, but it was, it was our normal. And so we're, it's crazy to think, but like looking back again, I can see God's hand on it because yeah. again, we're not Christians at this point. We haven't accepted Jesus and, and I'm still kind of living in the bar life mm -hmm. and you know she had gotten connected with this uh women's the small group and um started started going going there and and you know i i really have to give her her credit and a lot of it stems from from this i think a lot of my philosophy i guess mm -hmm. was like she didn't try to save me you know um we see that kind of a lot is like missionary dating mm -hmm, and stuff like right. that but but she didn't try to save me but what she did do was she had a bunch of women i didn't know any of this i just found out about it you know a couple of years ago and and there was this whole group of women that i did not know that were praying for me wow prayer and, warriors man yeah man and it's super epic and and ladies i don't i don't really know who all of you are but i would just like to say thank you um, so I, we were kind of like church hopping, 
um, I'd always thought I'd raised my family in the church. I mm-hmm. was, I was raised in a church setting and I was mm-hmm. like, you know, the values and, and, and things that they're good for, for structure, for children. And it was like an ins, an ins to a mean means to an end. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we were kind of like looking around and, and church hopping and, um, still like totally living in, you know, my personal world, but like, um, you know, it would have been really easy if we had had just one kid Mm -hmm. for, you know, those first months to a year. It's like, you know, it's really a lot on, on the mom. Definitely. And it would have been really easy for me to be like, Hey, so I'm going to go meet the boys at the bar. Like you got this. I'll be back later. Mm Mm-hmm. But dude, with twins, it was like we were on rotating shifts where like we weren't sleeping, you know, so we would be like four hours on, she'd go take a nap and I'd be four hours on. And so there was not really any, any opportunity for that. So just through that, uh, you know, I feel like God started breaking some of those chains and then we, we started going to a couple churches and I was still like one foot in, one foot out. You know, sometimes I'd show up to, you know, church on Sunday, still like hung over from mm-hmm. Saturday nights and, you know, but I could tell like something was changing in me and I, I but I couldn't really put my finger on it. Um, so then we heard about this church that was starting on the beach funny enough, it had started out of a Christian surfers, <laughs> small group outreach sort of a thing. Um, my wife was like, I think you really like it. The pastor's a surfer. Wow. I was like, all right, well, let's try it. And we went and, um, I don't remember if it was the, the launch day or the next weekend. Um, but we went to one of the first services, um, when it launched as a church and I was like, dude, this is it. (laughs) Wow. Like this is, this is our home. Like when I, when I say like I walked in and it was like, do people actually cared who I was? Yeah. They came up and like really wanted to know me. And I don't know if it was because like they recognized me from the water or what, but like they really cared. Wow. And it was really weird to me because I was used to walking into, uh, you know, church settings and it was like, you know, the record sc- screeches to a halt. That's and right. Everybody whips their head around. It's like, who's this guy? And, um, yeah, I, I guess you guys can't see me out there, but you, you know, I got really long hair and, uh, yeah, kind of, kind of look like a hippie. I guess that would be a good word. Well, for I, it. I love, I loved you did announcements at church one week and had no shoes. I'm like, this is classic <laughs> upper room. This is our church right here. I love this. This is awesome. Yeah, man, and it's something that we deal with a lot, especially in Latin America and cent- you know Central and South America where. We, I've, I can't tell you the amount of times I've I've heard from locals that they'll show up to a church and they'll be turned away. Wow. They'll be like, the the people will be like, no, you have to go get your hair cut. Um, you have tattoos on. You better put on sleeves. You can't wow. wear flip flops in church. Like, what are you doing? And and it's like, bro, you got it so backwards. Mm-hmm. Jesus doesn't care about the outside. He cares about heart change. He cares about what's going on on the inside. Yeah. And so, yeah back to the church it was just like dude these people get it they 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 understood me they this understood is real. yeah it was real and so i was like i was all in man i mean i basically within the next couple weeks or month like went through growth track which is kind of like uh you know spiritual gifts test and different ways that you can serve in the in the church and church community and like uh just started serving i um, I, I'm a photographer in my like spare time. Um, and so I started, you know, taking pictures for the church and still kind of one foot in one foot out. But then, um, that summer the church was taking a mission trip. We taken a team to Haiti and, um, wow. I had the opportunity to go, um, super blessed super crazy um how it ended up happening again just god's hand on everything i had not asked off work (laughs) yeah you're a surfer (laughs) and a week before we were supposed to leave the friday before we were supposed to leave we were supposed to leave the next friday so a week before we left 
I I got let go from my job. Oh wow! Um, they shut down their entire real estate development department. Um, so I was just like, it's kind of out of the blue. Yikes! We got, you know, basically newborn twins. Like, dude, everything. And I remember coming home, and me and my wife talked about it all the time. And she was like, it was the weirdest thing. You just chuckled, and you just go, well. At least I don't have to ask off for the mission trip now. <laughs> oh, man. And so, so yeah, we went to Haiti for a week, and it was, you know, obviously, like we were talking about with short-term missions, like mm-hmm. it, was, it was a life-changing experience. But I, I had an encounter. I guess that's the easiest way you can put it. Like, I encountered God there. Wow. And, um, you know, we were, we were doing some outreach in this community, and we had, we met this lady who had like days before tried to commit suicide oh like man. you could still see the fresh like she tried to hang herself and you could see the fresh wounds still around her neck and it was like super gnarly and we went back to her home and we prayed with her and we washed her feet and the immediate change i could see in her all of a sudden it like i, I don't know like clicked for me like wow. this is real and like the comfort and and everything that came to this woman it just like it took it to a whole nother level mm. i think for a while it was like like um like book learning as opposed to application mm-hmm. like you can you can learn everything and take the tests and be certified to do it but then once you're actually on the job it's kind of a different story and that's kind of how it felt to me and so um that was like a huge, you know, huge impact for me. Um, later on the trip, it was, you know, they don't speak English in Haiti. They, mm-hmm. they speak Creole and we were at a worship service. And again, I'm not like a big in, in the church community sort of thing. And they were singing some worship music in Creole and it was like clear as day in English to me. And I, have wow. no explanation for that i don't know like i didn't know these songs god was moving and then. so yeah um i remember i have in my in my journal from that trip that um one of the last nights i felt like god had told me like so i've been super blessed i got to travel a lot throughout my life yeah uh, my dad's eastern european so we grew up traveling i'm really comfortable in like not comfortable situations <laughs> like that that's an easy way to put it and so I really felt like God, God told me like, you're going to be leading trips wow. like, like this in the future. And I was like, okay, <laughs> like he's equipped you. <laughs> all right. And you know, so again, it was kind of one of those things where I was just like, all right, let's, let's follow the breadcrumbs. So I started getting more plugged in at church, serving more, serving more, um, found out we have some you know we have a lot of surfers in our church yes and they um have a partner a partner church in el salvador that we work with la red and they go down once twice three times a year kind of i don't know whenever we feel like it right (laughs) and um so they were like dude you got to come on one of these trips to el salvador with us like the waves are really good and and this church that we work with and the outreach is like super, super impactful and and amazing. And so, um, I went down there and, you know, it was to me, I was like, dude, these are, this is it. These are my people. I mean, I, I went to El Salvador, I think probably like 12 to 15 times in the next three years. And at one point, um, me and my wife were actually looking at moving mm-hmm. to El Salvador. We oh, even, cool. like, found some property and I was going to go, uh, view the property while we were on a surf and serve down oh, there wow. actually. And, um, somebody bought it like the day I was supposed to go view the property. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, so that, that, that trip to El Salvador, that was my introduction to this idea of surf and serve. And then. You know, that was just with the local church, and I still didn't know much about Christian surfers or anything. And, you know, I, I have to have to say, like, if we're not if we're not reaching out to people, then we're not doing our job. And, yeah. I, and I say that and I, I'm so like passionate about that. Like like when I mean reaching out to people, I mean, in, in, in our kind of realm 
with which is like surfers in the water um so i was out i was out surfing one day and and surfing with a guy who i surfed with for 15 years probably and never had conversation more than just to like oh what are you riding what you know how was how was the last swell just kind of these surface level surf nice ride man yeah exactly <laughs> and um i don't know man i he must have felt led or you know emboldened or whatever whatever the word is but he kind of asked me about my faith no and way and i was just like i, I kind of told him like i was just diving in and um he told me about this thing called christian surfers no that they way had locally and invited me to come out um to one of their meetings they're actually having like a prayer meeting because uh they're planning this big outreach on the beach um which i came to find out no is family beach fest <laughs> okay and so um i i came to one of the meetings and uh was like bro these are my people wow they're they're passionate about surfing but it's like paled in comparison to like their passion for jesus mm -hmm. and so that's like that's kind of the beginning like i have to like give give super props to uh to ben uh ben martin oh wow. like he's 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 kind of the whole reason that i'm even in the christian surfer world just because he took a second to have a real conversation with me in the water and like i you know one one of my callings is like to do that because i wonder how many other lesons there are out there surfing that yeah. like all they just need is somebody to like talk to them and bring them bring them into a community mm -hmm. and and again like get out of the way and let yeah. god do what he's already got planned and so, yeah, I mean, I'm just super grateful to have, like, found this community. And then, like, I come to find out that there's, like, so many epic Christians who are surfers in mm -hmm. our community. And, like, they've fully embraced and, like, embraced me and, like, taken me under their wing and helped me along. And some of them, you know, are, are I mean, just the most wonderfully impactful people on my life wow. and yeah i just like i'm just so grateful that i found the community i found not only with cs but with upper room definitely and then like you know with cs the coolest thing is is like that community that started here it's now grown like around the country and around the world i've been a part of like two weddings in el salvador wow. like one of one of my good friends is is like about to have a baby in Nicaragua and I just like happen to be going on a surf and serve mm -hmm. like to Nicaragua and we're we're leading a, a Groms trip which is like age 13 to 17 so there's gonna be like 14 or 16 teenagers that me and two other adults are leading so y'all pray for yeah, us yeah I was please. like man I'm <laughs> it's taking my breath away <laughs> no that's awesome dude but yeah and so I, you know, actually, it's kind of a funny story. Like you had uh, Jacob on here mm -hmm. um, a, a little while ago, and uh, the community aspect. He was he was traveling out to California to go surf, and the buddy that he was surfing with, like, he lives out there and he's got a day job. And uh -huh. so during you know the first couple days he was there, he was like kind of gonna be cruising solo. And I was like, all right, dude, let me let me link you up with my friends out there. Oh wow! And so I, I just like called my buddy Shane, who lives in Oceanside, or actually in Carlsbad. I think they might get mad if I get it wrong. <laughs> but um, and I was like, listen, my buddy Jacob's coming out. Like y'all get together and like show him the spots, like mm -hmm. put him on some waves. And so like he just dropped everything and like, wow, hung out with Jacob for like three or four days. Like took him to a couple different chapter meetings. Um, and like, I, I get, I get a call from Jacob and he's like, he's like, dude, we went down to this, this, this wave and like Point Loma and we're surfing and people were asking me like, oh, so where are you from? And he's like, Pensacola. And they're like, oh, do you know Lizon? Oh, wow. And he's like, dude, how do you know these people? And I'm like, man, the community is so rad. Like there's not really a, a beach with waves mm -hmm. around the country that like I couldn't go to that I would either have somebody who's going to like 
put you up, help you out, show wow. you the waves. Or if there's not, then there's somebody who like will be like, okay, this is the dude you need to talk to. How cool is that? I had a guy just come just on the trip. He's from New York and um, he happens to be going to Portugal for work. And he's like, hey, do you have any contacts in Portugal? And I was like, you know, I don't. But I know somebody who does. That's right. And so I call Buck, who used to be like one of the CS representatives for Portugal. And I'm like, hey, Buck, this guy's going to Portugal. Can you hook him up with some CS people? Mm -hmm. And he's like, sure thing. It's just like, <laughs> dude, it's it's so epic, the community. And like, it's something that it, it really is. It was like intentional to start building. And then God's like, let me blow this up. Even yeah. More, like than you guys could have ever imagined. And it's so cool to see. Um you know, like we, we've got chapters in places that people probably don't even know there are waves. You know, we, we have a, a Christian surfers chapter on Lake Michigan. I was going to ask if Michigan yeah, had one. Dude. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Those guys are epic. I mean, they're brave. They, dude. It's cold. <laughs> yeah. They're, 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 I mean, it's frozen right now. They can't surf right now, even if they want to, just because there's like ice chunks in the water. Mm. But, um, yeah, they're, they're some of the most rad people. Um, I've, I, I got to have a couple of them come on a trip to Panama with me and dude, they, they just are so stoked. We can get jaded sometimes about waves mm -hmm. and, um, to see somebody who's just genuinely stoked to surf anything is again, really humbling. And you realize like that, that gratitude, gratitude. that we need. Um, yeah, it's, it's really impactful. We kind of have a, a similar like theme here in the Gulf coast. Mm -hmm. Our waves don't always get that great. And so like we surf whenever there's waves, That's right. there's like a wave breaking, we're surfing. <clears throat> and so, uh, some, some of the Californians have kind of coined a phrase called Florida firing. Oh, and yeah. that's like, it's terrible and windy and they Slop. don't even want to surf. And all the guys from Florida are like, this is so good. Best it's like ever. five star. <laughs> yeah. Florida firing. Nice. Cool, man. Really want to encourage you like with your ministry, just keep going. You know, as we wrap it up, what's one Bible verse that's encouraging you in this season? Yeah. You know, God's, God's really been working on me a little bit. <laughs> um, you know, we, as we go and we try to reach these reach people, reach surfers, um, I've kind of found that we, like nobody's going to listen to you if you don't have relationship mm -hmm. with them. And so really building those relationships with people is super important. And how do we build relationships with people? Like how, how can that happen? Um, organically. And, um, you know, I have like a handful of mentors that like I really look up to and, mm -hmm. One of them, like, he's just, he's got this quote. It's just such an epic quote. He's like, how do we reach people? And it's like, just, we love them. Mm -hmm. We love them. We love them. We love them. And eventually they're like, they're going to ask us why. Right. And that's when we can share what God's done in our life and let him work in their life. Mm -hmm. And so really like what God's been putting on my heart for really the last couple months. And it's super <laughs> cool because actually on the trip to to the dr it like it came up like four different times from wow. different people and uh it's not on I'm accident like, yeah dude exactly and so it's uh first timothy 1 5 and it says the aim of our charge is love it's love hmm. it's love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith man and so like for me man that's just that's been a prayer of mine that you know for me for my wife, for my kids, for our community, mm -hmm. that like we can all have a pure heart, a clean heart, a, a good conscience mm -hmm. and sincere faith, man. And, and if we do, then that love is just going to like emanate out of us. Yeah. Like, you know, like the sweet aroma, man. And when people walk by, we, we, we want them to be like, what's it, what, what is up with this guy? Like what's different about him? I, I'm interested to know. And like, that was, you know, that was something for me when, when I first came to Christ, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't some sermon that like hooked me. It wasn't anything. It was, it was walking into somewhere. And when I like, I felt seen, 
I felt accepted as I was. Mm -hmm. They weren't like looking to change me or anything like that. And and I felt loved. And it wasn't until then I was like, what is up with this? Like I, I'm, I am now very interested as to like, what is, what is, what is up with these people? Like, what's going on here yeah. and, and so you know we really you know i think sometimes we get it twisted that like we're doing stuff you know mm-hmm. i had a a guy ask me in a, on a trip in el salvador uh he's like you know leading leading people he's like how many people have you saved and i'm sure there was like some language barrier there mm-hmm. but i was like i just started laughing i was like bro i have not saved anybody that's right what are you talking about He's like, oh, no, but, like, how many people have you led to Christ? And I was like, I haven't led anybody to Christ. I've shared what God's done in my life Mm -hmm. and gotten out of the way. Yeah. (laughs) You know? For sure. Man, that's awesome. Well, that's an awesome, humble heart to realize that, that he's he's the one doing all the work. We're just showing up. (laughs) Oh, yeah, man. I mean, I'm just a burnt-out surfer that he, like, (laughs) pulled out of the water and pulled out of the bars and was like, hey, I got a job for you. Like, I think sometimes where you know you hear it a lot in the christian like you know he doesn't call the qualified he qualifies mm-hmm. the called but like that's 100 percent true but we got to say yes too yep. and it takes like a big leap of faith definitely to say yes to something that like is pretty terrifying you know i'm i'm not a pastor i have no <laughs> formal you know christian theology training or anything like that mm-hmm. like but he's he's called me to reach people in my community and like dude we just gotta send it and just keep going and like he's gonna do the work and do we nail it all the time absolutely not because we're all human we're all, right. we're all fallen we're all sinners mm-hmm. but god's gonna use it for his glory and like yeah i i mean you just all, all we can do is like keep taking those steps he isn't like shine a you know giant halogen bulb down the road for us to see where we're going in a mile mm-hmm. he just lights that next step the next step so you just got to take that next step and trust have faith that you know his plan is is better than ours and i am like a hundred percent a walking testament to like his plan is way better than ours mm-hmm. way better and so like yeah i would just encourage people you know out there wherever you are in your faith walk maybe you don't even know christ like Take that step. Yeah. Go, go to church. Go meet, meet in community with people. Um, it's super important, you know, because like, like we just said, like we will all kind of fall short for sure at mm-hmm. some point. But when you're surrounded by people who really, you know, are are chasing after God and and understand that, they'll come around you and be like, "Hey, man, maybe you blew it." But don't worry, we all blow it, That's man. Right. And and his grace is sufficient. And so, like, do we need to like, you know, turn the other way from from the thing that we did? Of course. Do we need to repent? Absolutely. But don't get it twisted. Mm-hmm. Don't don't throw the baby out with bathwater, man. That's like right. just just keep pushing forward. Don't quit. Jesus loves you. And like there's nothing that can that can come between that. Nothing. Mm-hmm. Man, what a great encouragement. Lizon, I appreciate you, buddy. Thank you for coming on. Uh, audience, check out all these awesome resources that Lizon's talking about. If you want to get involved with Christian Surfers, take that step, do it. Go on mission trips, serve Christ wherever you're at, or if you want to go somewhere else and do something amazing for them, get plugged in with Christian Surfers and go go on a mission trip and and serve Christ somewhere else. So thank y'all for listening. Uh, God bless y'all. We love y'all and we'll see you soon. Hey, this is Dustin, one of the pastors at Grace Bible Church in Sebring, Florida. Thanks for tuning in to listen to broadcast his love with Ricky Van Stewart. I hope you will also consider joining us on our podcast as well. Our hope is to encourage you, inspire you and compel you towards a closer walk with Jesus and one another. You can find us on every platform where podcasts are offered by simply searching for Grace Bible Church Sebring. Again, this is Pastor Dustin, and I hope to get to connect with you very soon. Hey, this is Mark Stockland, pastor and CEO for Haiti Bible Mission in Jeremy Haiti. If you'd like to follow along with what we're doing in Jeremy Haiti, 
You can check us out at HaitiBibleMission.org. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We'd love to get you guys connected with what we're doing in Jeremy Haiti and how you can partner with us to live the difference, to help empower leaders to transform communities. God bless you guys and have a great day. Hey everyone, it's Erica with Glassy Day Studio, where we believe every broken, discarded, and disrupted thing will be reclaimed, restored, and redeemed by the one who created and calms the waves. Glassy Day jewelry is shaped from recycled surfboard resin, and each design is named after a woman in the Bible. And 10% of every purchase supports foster care ministries. Check it out at glassydaystudio.com. And thanks for listening. And if this episode has drawn you closer to Christ, please share it with your friends and family or even one person that might find encouragement in the message and a deeper relationship with Christ. God bless and have a great week. This is amazing.